Hello and welcome to JN Aquarium Supply. Today we're going to talk about phytoplankton. We're going to talk about what phytoplankton is good for, what is phytoplankton, where you can get phytoplankton, and how to culture it yourself. So stay tuned for lots of helpful tips all about phytoplankton. So here is a 16 ounce bottle of phytoplankton. We sell this phytoplankton. This is our very own that we culture to sell by JM Aquarium Supply. But you can get phytoplankton in many, many different uh, places. Lots of people sell it. Uh, it really doesn't matter where you get it, long as it is good phytoplankton, nice and dark. If it comes in very light colored, you didn't receive very good phytoplankton. Phytoplankton, very simply, are microscopic one-cell marine algaes that are on the very bottom of the marine food chain. This means that most filter feeding organisms eat phytoplankton, including corals. This is why you see so many people with reef tanks love phytoplankton. Clams, copepods, and rotifers. The reason I keep phytoplankton mainly it's because I raise rotifers to breed clownfish. So if you have a reef tank you're raising copepods or rotifers for your corals and reef tank, phytoplankton is a need for you. Phytoplankton is very very easy and not very expensive to culture yourself so you could have a never-ending supply of phytoplankton if you culture it correctly. So first we're gonna go over a few things that you need in order to culture your own phytoplankton. Obviously first you need a supply of phytoplankton to start your cultures. You're going to need a little bit of this phytoplankton that you originally purchased to be able to culture more. So keep in mind when you are purchasing phytoplankton and if you have purchased rotifers or copepods at the same time and you have an immediate need to feed them, you will need to use a little bit of your phytoplankton that you purchased to continue your cultures moving forward. Next you're going to need a product called Gillard's F2 fertilizer. This is the very best fertilizer you can use to cultivate phytoplankton. Some people use other alternatives like miracle Grow and whatnot but miracle Grow and some of these other commercial uh, general fertilizers have undesirable contents in them that people don't want in the reef tanks. F2 can be a little bit difficult difficult to find but it is possible and you should make sure you have some F2 before you receive your phytoplankton. Next you're going to need very simply a 2 liter pop bottle, juice jug, any type of plastic beverage container that holds 2 liters of liquid. You are also going to require a supply of bleach. Bleach is used to make sure that our jugs, our two liter containers, are perfectly disinfected. You're going to require a supply of reverse osmosis water and be able to mix some marine salt water. A air supply is going to be required whether it's a small air pump or whether you have a central system for your air supply. And finally you will need some aquarium airline tubing, an aquarium control valve, and optionally but works great a piece of rigid aquarium airline tubing. And last but not least you're going to need a source of light. I have had great success using the 45k shop lights. You can get them at any major hardware store. I believe I got mine from Costco. They've been very effective when operating my own phytoplankton cultures. So how I start the process of culturing my own phytoplankton is I gotta start with the bottle. So I have a two liter pop bottle here. It's been rinsed out. It's, uh, that's it. Just rinsed out the label taken off of it and I've put a funnel on top so that we can handle the next portion of this without making a mess and 
what we're going to do is we're going to bleach the bottle we want this bottle to be totally disinfected so i literally do like a 10 percent bleach concentration I'm using a funnel so i can do this in video at the same time so that's good it's maybe not quite 10 percent i don't know i don't do it to an exact science but what i do know is i have that much bleach in the bottle and i'm going to fill the rest up with hot tap water see if we can handle this with one hand look at us go so we'll fill this right up to the top so once we have this filled up to the top what we're going to do very simply is leave this alone for a couple hours almost there and we're there overflowing so we're very very full i'm going to put the cap on but this is a very important point if you're going to put the cap on i just put it on extremely loosely still lots of ventilation coming out of the bottle so like i said we'll leave this for at least a couple hours let the bleach do its job so I have another bottle already ready to go here that's already been through the process of being bleached for all you that would have been coy to knowing that this is a different bottle. But we will go through the process after you've bleached the bottle of what you do. Definitely dump out the bleach after you're done. And then I would rinse the bottle at least five, six times, shaking vigorously and rinsing until you don't smell actually any bleach in the bottle whatsoever. Use the cap as well, put the cap on it, slosh it around, rinse it out really good with hot water. Really good. Like I said, I've already done this, so I'm just doing this to kind of give you an idea of what I would do. And then once I've done this, like I said, five or six times with just hot tap water. I will rinse the bottle out with RO water after. Some may ask, why would you waste the RO water to rinse the bottle out? That's a very good question. The reason being is my tap water is about 400 ppm chlorinated. And... I really don't want any PPM other than marine water in my solution. This can cause unwanted algaes, different things to happen. So just to ensure that I'm just as pure as I can be with sterilization, this is what I do. So it's even been rinsed with RO water. So next, we have to put a hole in the cap so that we can fit our airline through the cap into the bottle. That way we don't get a whole bunch of splashing and whatnot with all the bubbles happening. You want the hole just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch airline. So I would go at least five sixteenths. You could even go up to three eighths if you really wanted to. And that's what we're after. So next, set up your air pump with your air line, your control valve, and your rigid aquarium tubing. And you're all set to get mixing. Remember, if you're gonna use a small air pump, make sure the air pump is above the liquid that you're pumping the air into, unless you have a check valve. I like to start with approximately five ounces of phytoplankton to start my phytoplankton cultures. This is five ounces to start a two liter culture. This has worked best for me using the Gallard F2 fertilizer dosing guidelines of one milliliter of Gallard F2 for one liter. So if we're doing two liters, we need two milliliters 
of Gillard's F2 for this much phytoplankton in order to have some success. Next, we're gonna wanna mix up some marine water and I like to mix mine for my phytoplankton between 18 and 20 on the hydrometer. Um, so this is where you'll want your salinity. Also, while you're mixing this marine water, bring it to room temperature. So my room temperature in here where I grow my phytoplankton is about uh, 71.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is what I'm gonna warm my water up to before I add it to my starter culture. So I then very simply pour the five ounces of rich phytoplankton into the bottle. That's approximately how much I need to start a culture. So just before we add the fresh marine water, we're gonna add the Gillard's F2 fertilizer. Like previously said, we're adding one milliliter per liter of salt water. So I have two milliliters measured out in this cup and I very simply take it and pour it in. I like to pour it in before I pour in the fresh marine water because I know it's mixing it up really, really good when I pour in the marine water. Once your marine water is at your desired salinity and your desired temperature, which can be anywhere it's from 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, it's really not that picky, probably grows faster the warmer it is. We can start adding our fresh marine water to the bottle. You're gonna notice that the phytoplankton solution is going to get very light colored compared to what you started with. And this is okay. This is what we're actually after. Once we got her almost full, right about there, I would stop there. Next, we add the airline. Air pump plugged in, everything installed, got our piece of rigid airline on there, center right to the bottom, get the bubbles coming up right from the bottom, and there we have it, the start of a phytoplankton culture. Keep it underneath the light. I just use very simple four foot shop lights, I believe I purchased them at Costco. I try to get the daytime 4500Ks. They seem to work really well for lighting. So after you've started your next culture, that's how much phytoplankton you should have left from a 16 ounce bottle when you start. It gives you some to feed if you got rotifers uh, at the same time. It gives you some to feed, but that really won't last that long with a good culture of rotifers. So if I was starting a phytoplankton culture and I got rotifers at the same time, so I was trying to feed and culture at the same time, I would get at least two bottles of phytoplankton to start. Depending on your lighting and your temperature, time will vary at how long it's gonna to take to culture your phytoplankton. But this bottle, beside the bottle we just set up, is about five days old and looked exactly like the bottle we just set up five days ago. So that'll give you an idea of how quick you can grow your own phytoplankton. Your phytoplankton should be a rich, dark, dark, dark forest green when it is ready to be harvested. Just one additional tip for you. If you're culturing phytoplankton and copepods or rotifers or any micro marine bug invertebrate that eats phytoplankton, keep it very, very far away from your phytoplankton cultures. 
Also, if you use buckets, tools, um, funnels, keep those items separate that are in contact with your rotifers or copepods. Learn from my mistakes. If you keep them too close to each other, you will get rotifers or copepods in your phytoplankton and they will destroy your culture. They will eat your entire culture. So heed my advice on this and keep those cultures very much separated. Other than that, have some fun and grow some phytoplankton and make your tanks happier, your marine tanks happier. Give your marine tanks the food that they are searching for. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps you with some of the mysteries in cultivating phytoplankton and I wish you great success at your own cultivations of phytoplankton and until next time happy fish keeping take care bye for now